Hello and welcome back my friends of high performance, Pixel Accelerators. Today it's all about one single graphics card, namely the NVIDIA RTX 3070. Well, and in some way, also the X flagship model RTX 2080 Ti. Now, since NVIDIA has officially announced their 3070, many of you ask yourselves the very important and meaningful question, is the RTX 3070 actually really faster and better than the 2080 Ti? According to NVIDIA, it was stated the new graphics card would definitely be able to keep up with the 2080 Ti, if not even surpass it in some instances. What makes this question so damn hot is because the 3070 is way, way cheaper than what a 2080 Ti costs or has cost in the past. For this interesting comparison, the Gigabyte RTX 3070 Gaming OC 8G will take on its duty. How much does such a card cost, you ask? Well, that's a question not easy to answer due to the massive launch chaos once again. At the time of making this video, we are talking of prices in the 600 to 650 US dollar mark. But those prices fluctuate a lot, so the pricing I'm naming here today should be taken with a grain of salt. In the next upcoming few weeks and months, those could very well turn out to be untrue. So please be understanding of the fact and don't wonder if my stated prices make no sense at some point in the future. And yes, I can't believe my luck, the RTX 3070, the kind Yorgios over at the hardware shop, Equipper, managed to get a hold on for me at launch day. So he shipped it my way immediately. I guess that's what you get when you're lucky enough to know such a brave Spartan warrior and use him as a secret weapon. Hashtag not sponsored. Right off the bat, I can let you know there's no clear winner today. Both the 3070 as well as the 2080 Ti have its pros and cons. The new 3070 by far is nowhere near perfection, so please lower your expectations just in case they're too high. As for what's included in the box, it's very simple. The only thing that really stands out is that big colored sheet of paper reminding you to go register your card over at Gigabyte's website to unlock your four years of warranty. That's pretty cool actually. Other than that, Gigabyte remains true to their triple fan Windforce 3X design of past years, well except for some updates to its design, which is normal over the course of time. Judging by the looks of this graphics card, I really can't complain. Not bad at all, although I still find it to be a bit of a bummer. Gigabyte no longer goes for their metal shrouds, like they once did in 2013 or 2014 for instance. These days it's all plastic, but luckily the build quality still is perfectly fine plus points this card manages to harvest for its fancy silver aluminum backplate. After the PCB ends, there's even a cutout so heat can easily exit through there, just like it's the case with the RTX 3090 Tough Gaming Edition by ASUS that I've recently taken a look at. The classic Gigabyte triple fans come into play here. They apparently seem to have been improved, since I can now happily report they're much, much quieter than they once were on the past few graphics cards they've released. As always, the center fan spins in the opposite direction to reduce turbulence. A very welcome addition to me as always is the semi-passive cooling, so the fans only kick in once the GPU load and temperature increases. Noteworthy of mentioning also is the implementation of a dual BIOS switch, something I didn't even notice in my first filming session of this card. Anyway, we can switch between OC and silent modes. Obviously, this doesn't happen to be one of the most compact graphics cards on the market, but coming in at a length of 286mm, with the rest of the dimensions fairly standard, you normally should not run into any clearance issues with most modern PC cases out there. As it is to be expected, Gigabyte can't just release one of their products without any RGB on there, so they've added their logo that lights up along with a bar. For my taste, that's not too shabby. To feed the 3070 with power, a PCIe 8-pin and 6-pin power connector is required. In terms of specs, the RTX 3070 on paper at least makes a great impression, albeit not in each and every point. Immediately noticeable is the big difference in shader count between the 3070 and 2080 Ti. If we were to simply judge by that, the 3070 would offer a lot more raw performance than the 2080 Ti, but it's not as simple as that. There are a whole bunch of factors that need to be considered, one of which simply being the architecture used. 
An interesting example, there are a lot more RT and Tensor cores on the 2080 Ti than there are on the 3070. It sure will be an exciting race. Some of you surely have noticed that unlike with the 3080 and 3090 GPUs, the RTX 3070 no longer makes use of the new super-fast GDDR6X video memory. Instead, Nvidia lays their trust into the long-standing GDDR6 VRAM at 14 gigabits per second. Very much a sin in the eyes of enthusiasts and many users, however, is the fact that we only get a capacity of 8 gigabytes. Whereas the competition, AMD tries to go higher and higher, memory-wise, as far as possible at least, Nvidia remains stubborn and in a lot of their performance tiers still focuses to deliver only 8 or 10 gigabytes, despite the community clearly wanting more for quite some time now in order to get a bit more future-proofness for upcoming texture-rich game titles, so to speak. This in fact is debatable whether or not 8 gigabytes are sufficient for the years to come. Some say no, others say yes. What we all can agree on though is that more memory certainly wouldn't hurt. At a somewhat comparable price point, AMD apparently will be offering 16GB to work with on their RX 6800 for instance. But hey, let's not go down this loophole. Let's move on for now. Once again, I'd like to quickly thank Enermax for providing me with their monstrous Max Titan 1250W 80 plus titanium power supply. For an RTX 3070, this PSU obviously is way too overkill, but my plans for it are an RTX 3090 and AMD Threadripper CPU combo. The reason I put advertisement on here is because this PSU does benefit me personally as well as from a business point of view, but I do want to let you know that I'm not being paid for this mention, just to avoid confusion and worse. Alright, that's enough talking, let's actually get into the benchmarks to find out what kind of performance A3070 brings to the table. Enjoy! Without denying, the RTX 3070 is an amazing GPU, and all in all, Nvidia did not necessarily exaggerate with their claims at their official announcement, even though not all seems to match up perfectly. But hey, a lot simply is a question of interpretation. Depending on who you ask and what site that individual prefers more, there certainly can be found a reason to attack Nvidia in some way, but also to back up their claims actually. 
Since I'm a reviewer, I like to remain somewhat critical, which is exactly why I'll be honest with you and tell you straight up that I was a little bit let down by the RTX 3070. For the most part, the 3070 on average, from a FPS point of view, at 1440p as well as at 4K, delivers about the same frame rate as the 2080 Ti does. 2-3% more performance certainly would have been nice and were my personal expectations, but maybe that was a bit too much to ask for. Nonetheless, I have to salute Nvidia in some way, albeit 2080 Ti owners might be a bit mad, since for hundreds of dollars less, you get 2080 Ti performance with the RTX 3070. And keep in mind, 4K gaming is not off the table with neither a 2080 Ti nor a 3070. It's doable if you're ready for some compromises when it comes to your graphic settings. For 1440p WQHD gaming, a 3070 is one hell of a good deal. If you're asking me, you don't need any more for WQHD. Well, that is one also somewhat considering pricing slash value. To my surprise, I had to witness the 2080 Ti and certain game titles with ray tracing and DLSS enabled is capable of outputting more FPS on the screen than the 3070 does. In some way that does make sense, since the 2080 Ti sports a whole lot more RT as well as tensor cores. Still, it's fascinating how much can be squeezed out of the Ampere architecture. 3070 and 2080 Ti, after all, still perform very similarly with ray tracing and DLSS enabled. Where a new 3070 takes an extreme lead over the 2080 Ti is productivity. When rendering, the 3070 is not actually far off from being twice as fast as the 2080 Ti. Of course, not in each and every application, that is. In some, it's a tight race where only ray tracing manages to carry the 3070 forward to its lead. As was to be expected, Gigabyte's Windforce 3X cooler does a great job in terms of temperatures. I've never had any bad experiences in that regard. The fan noise is very much within limits this time around. For once, Gigabyte has successfully managed to build a really quiet graphics card. Hats off! Rather amusing, on the other hand, are the results regarding power draw. Although we've heard all those good things about how much more efficient Ampere should be, there's not so much left of that claim anymore. In my specific case, the 3070 happens to consume give or take 20 watts more power than the older 2080 Ti does, while the frame rate in game more or less is identical. What still needs to be considered though is the productivity side of things, where the 3070 simply does better. For a lot of gamers out there, in this price range, that's not something they primarily care for, however, at least that's my assumption. But here's the thing, we cannot just generalize my results and claims. At the end of the day, a lot comes down to what kind of model and what AIB the graphics card is by. Basically, how far has the card been factory overclocked, what do the power limits look like, and so on and so forth. You see, there are a whole bunch of factors that need to be considered. A different RTX 3070 might as well operate more efficiently. Nevertheless, all in all, I really can't complain. Pricing, offered performance, as well as features are looking good. More video memory, that's something I'd like seeing here. At least 10 gigabytes, not a mere 8. Still 2080 Ti performance here for about $600 to $650, that is if those prices end up being correct, sounds like a pretty good deal to me. However, I would still watch out and not be overly excited for now, since we are still waiting for what AMD has to offer with their RX 6800 and 6800 XT cards. It won't take much longer until third-party independent reviews go online for those GPUs by Team Red. I'll do my best too to review those upcoming Radeon GPUs. Now if we ignore the fact this graphics card comes with only 8GB of VRAM, the Gigabyte RTX 3070 Gaming OC 8G is well worth recommending. Although my advice is to wait until we truly get to see what the best deals are out there. We should after all get the most for our money. With that said, it's time to say goodbye for me for now. I hope to have you back next time too. Take care.